Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and it's time for your weekly wrap up and I want to begin first as we always do by thanking our newest Patreon supporters and we have some uh, new folks joining the gold level of support. Mr. Morse who upgraded to uh, that level as well as Cody Falk who gave uh, last week. So I want to thank both of you for that contribution. They'll be in the shout out section of the end credit rolls here when we get into May. So I want to thank both of them for that. We also have some new Patreon supporters at other levels as well. Jose, Sarah Simon, Robert Smith, Duell Mitchell and Roy Lewis, and we also had Michael Statham contribute via the tip jar this week. So I want to thank everyone for their financial contributions to the channel, as well as everyone who watches on a regular basis too, because uh, we need both revenue and viewership to keep growing and everything that you're doing, watching these videos on a regular basis means a lot. So I want to thank all of you for that. And we did a bunch this week. It's always nice doing this job full time. Now I have time to do stuff. And uh, if you go on the extras channel, you actually get a sneak peek as to what I'll be uh, looking at this week, including a new switch, some speakers, a 3D camera, and the all controller that you might have heard about on ReRes. I got a prototype that I'll be uh, looking at later this week too, so you can check out the unboxings of all of those there. We had our monthly sponsored video from Plex where I dive into a feature and I looked at mobile Plex Sync this week where you can download your Plex library to watch it on the road. And if you have an Android device, you can put it on an SD card just like you can do with Netflix and Amazon content now. So a very convenient feature and I think you all might find that of interest. So check that out. I also looked at an affordable 23-inch uh, display from Lenovo that goes up to 75 hertz. In fact, most of the reviews I did this week were of affordable things. It just worked out that way. So a lot of you were interested in this monitor that appears in my videos quite often. So here's the review. You can check that out. We also had some comments on that because I missed the fact, I completely missed this, that it supports AMD FreeSync also. So pretty good deal, especially if you have an AMD GPU. It will sync itself up automatically with that monitor and everything will always look great on it. And I was very pleased with how that monitor uh, performs for its price point. I was also quite pleased with the CyberPower PC that I looked at, 720 bucks with an AMD GPU, the RX 480, a really nicely performing machine that I don't think you could build yourself for the same price. Uh, and if you do, you're, you're going to have to pay for the Windows license still also. So they really put together a very competitively priced computer that performs quite well for uh, gamers on a budget. So check out that review to see more. It's VR compatible. And we also took a look at a low-cost HP laser printer, 100 bucks for the one that you see here in the review, and it was a pretty good printer. It actually worked quite well, but it was lacking some features, namely AirPrint and Google Cloud Print support. So it was more of a computer printer than it was a mobile device printer. And a bunch of you wrote in saying, I should have looked at some brother printers that cost around the same or less with more of those features involved, and I probably should get one in. I should say, though, that over the long term, uh, HP laser printers professionally, when I was using them at my day job, and this is over the course of 25 years or so, uh, performed a lot better in the long term than the Brother printers did. I often I would buy a Brother printer when we needed something cheap and quick and easy, and they didn't last all that long, whereas the HP printers, even the cheap ones, did. And I guess it's just uh, one of those things about what your personal experiences are with the particular products. And I, I have found with printers is that uh, if I every printer review that I put up, there's always someone who pops on and says, I will never buy an HP Epson Canon or whatever printer ever again. And I think if you had a bad experience somewhere along the way in your computer, career, uh, you never go back to that brand again. And that's one of the things that printers kind of evoke in people. So I've always been uh, very fond of the HP laser printers. I had an HP LaserJet 4 that lasted like almost 15, 20 years. It was crazy how long that thing lasted. So everyone just has their preferences, but I should probably check out some brother printers and maybe I'll, I'll look around for some of their newer low cost ones and bring it in for review at some point. And now it's time for a couple of things that are on my mind that we are now in week five on my full-time venture here as a content creator. And so far, so good. I'm enjoying it. I'm really uh, very motivated to get up and keep working on stuff every day. So that has all been good. And I've got a lot of things in the hopper, which is also good. This is also the time of year that my traffic begins to uh, dive off. It has done this the last three years just because consumer electronics may not always be uh, front of mind for most consumers. They get back into that buying mode as we get into the falls. When I see back to school happening and I see holiday season happening is when my traffic begins to arch back up again. So I really hustle uh, throughout the spring and summer looking for stuff that might be looked for by those consumers so that when they get into the buying mode, uh, my reviews are front and center. So anything that you see out there that you think might be a good fit for the channel, do let me know in the comment section 
collection, so I go out and get them uh, so we can be well prepared when holiday season begins because now that I have a lot more time to review stuff, uh, that means I can get more stuff up in anticipation of the holiday season. So definitely let me know what you see out there. And I also found a really cool uh, way to improve my efficiency, especially for my video indexes. And a viewer wrote in about this, and unfortunately I forgot who it was because I have so many different ways for people to reach me, but uh, this viewer told me about uh, Producer's Best Friend, and this is a not inexpensive application for the Mac. It's about 100 bucks, but it is worth it. And anything that I can do to save a little bit of time here or there adds up to a lot. And if it's a one-time purchase of a software package, even 100 bucks, it makes a lot of sense. Let me show you how it works. I know it's kind of in the weeds here, but some of you like this behind the scenes stuff. So what I do when I'm making a video now is I drop these little markers in, uh, in the edit timeline here in Final Cut Pro. And what's cool about these little markers is that if I make things shorter, for example, all the markers update themselves here automatically, as you just saw on the side there. So I'm going to make this longer now. And look, it'll update all the time uh, markers. Even if I uh, take something out of the entire video completely, it will adjust everything up and down the video timeline, which is really helpful for me. So um, that was a big innovation for me to start doing that versus going back through the video and watching it again and then trying to remember all the different parts that I wanted to add to the index. The problem, though, was that I still had to type it all in and it was taking time and it was getting annoying. And when things get aggravating to me, especially inefficient things that I'm doing over and over again, I start to feel like I don't want to do them anymore. I lose motivation to do as good of a job on them as I should, knowing that there's probably a better way to do it. Uh, so what I was trying to do was maybe learn how to code and, or at least code enough uh, with XML to figure out how to uh, grab the XML file here that I can export from Final Cut and, and kind of build this myself. And then I heard about Producer's Friends. So inside of Final Cut Pro here, I can export the entire project as an XML file. And when I do that, I can go over to Producer's Best Friend and have it analyze that file for me. And what I'm going to do here is just turn off the audio rules, leave the video one here selected. And I've got a bunch of options that I can set for this. It can Put a, do a pretty uh, detailed spreadsheet of every edit that's in the video. And producers sometimes need this, especially in like a news environment where you're dropping in a lot of different clips and stuff along the way, even like movies and other things where you're trying to remember, where did I drop in that clip of B-roll? Well, you could do a search of this spreadsheet and find it uh, without having to go you know, dig around through an hour long uh, video that you're working on. But in my case, I just drop it out as a marker. I'm going to save that spreadsheet real quick. And uh, let me show you what it looks like here. So then I go over to the spreadsheet. This does seem like extra steps, but believe me, it's a lot faster. So when I pop in here, it's got all of my edits um, just kind of drawn out here for me to look at, but that's not what I'm looking for. If I go over to markers, though, uh, you can see every marker is here, and it also has the position. The problem, though, is that it was giving me too much information in the time section, but because I am in Excel, I can do a little formula here. And uh, what I did is I just typed in video index in a semicolon because I have another Mac app called uh, Text Expander that lets me take a little snippet of text that I can remember and then drops in something more complicated like this huge Excel thing that I put together. So what this does is it first substitutes the zero, zero colons out with nothing. So what it does is it looks in this uh, D here for a zero, zero colon, and it just strips them out if it sees it, which is really helpful, right? Because YouTube doesn't need all that information. And then left here means that it's going to only go so far from the left of the column, and that allows me to get rid of the semicolon and the 26 here. And then what it also does is it adds in the text along with a dash uh, from column A. So you can see here that I've got and and a dash and and then a space and then and an a2 which then adds that in so if i hit enter here you can see what i get which is exactly the format that i use in my video index and i just paste this down like so and then i just grab the whole thing and just paste it into the video description and i'm done so one little efficiency gained and it's actually fun for me to do this versus typing it all in manually and that makes me work faster and happier uh, which is always a good thing and a friend of mine sent me a really interesting article in Women's Wear Daily about uh, the Federal Trade Commission and media companies, specifically around native advertising. And it's relevant beyond just women's fashion, although there have been some uh, really big issues going on in the fashion world with this topic that we talk about here on the channel from time to time. This is why my disclaimers are so long on my videos, because I think it's important for viewers to know exactly where I'm coming from, especially if a video is sponsored. And one of the things in the article here, again, I definitely recommend reading it if 
you are interested in this topic. Uh, they quoted a uh, CUNY survey that found 77% of those studied uh, did not identify native ads as advertising. These are general consumers. And this is why uh, I've been so crazy about this topic because you'll see so many videos out there. We'll go back to my ring doorbell thing from last year that look like regular reviews, but they were compensated for them and were not disclosing them properly. And even the Kardashians are doing this kind of stuff, not properly. And this is, again, why I'm so crazy about it. Uh, great article to read and the uh, Federal Trade Commission is uh, really promising to step up their enforcement of this stuff as well. So if your favorite YouTubers are not disclosing properly, they should be. And that is why I do it. And I sometimes sound like an old man yelling at you, but uh, this is really, I think, important for this platform to grow and mature and be a place where everyone can make a living on it. And that's why I do what I do. And Rico reported something interesting about Roku last week and that they're hiring a team of lobbyists to fight for net neutrality, uh, primarily because they're looking at launching their own TV service, very similar to Sling and YouTube TV. So they're hoping for a, a neutral web in which to offer their, uh, their services through. So this is going to be a very interesting story this week as the FCC has leaked out this morning, actually, uh, some of their early thoughts on how their changes to net neutrality will come about. And it looks like they want to make this an industry policed thing. Thing, uh, versus something that is imposed upon them by regulation. So that is uh, what might be the case here. And it looks like they're also going to ask the FTC to enforce net neutrality. And apparently there was some uh, area where the FTC was regulating these internet providers under its guise of consumer protection versus the FCC, which was regulating these folks as carriers of, uh, of a utility, for example. So Congress is still not being asked to sound off on this, unfortunately. So it looks like they are trying to go back to the way things were before and maybe have the industry pledge not to treat traffic differently. But what that means for us consumers remains to be seen. So we'll have to see how all of this is going to play out in the coming weeks. But uh, now that there are uh, lobbyists gearing up on both sides for this fight, and there's a lot of money involved, both from the ISPs as well as the content providers, this is going to be dragging on for quite a while. I don't think it's going to be the immediate Armageddon that a lot of people were predicting because of the amount of heavyweights on both sides of this issue. So I'm really eager to see how this plays out. And I am sure Congress is eager not to get in the middle of it either. And that's the unfortunate thing. I think we're just going to be in this gray area uh, for a long time to come. And now it's time for some Q&A from you, the viewers. And I got a great set of links here from Alex Vega. Uh, the first one here is about picking the right laptop CPU. And he found a great article on uh, Laptop Magazine to uh, give you a breakdown on all the different uh, formulations of Intel processors that are out there. It can get very confusing. And sometimes I even get confused looking at these things all the time. So this article is a great reference, uh, definitely worth checking out. And he also sent over something related to our VPN discussion of last week, which is uh, a great site that uh, kind of gets all the VPNs together and looks at all the different features of them so you can pick the one that is right for you. And Alex actually took what uh, this site has and compiled it into something that was a little bit easier to look at. Uh, the site, by the way, is that one privacy site. And you can check out uh, that link down below to see Alex's spreadsheet, which I think is a little bit easier to look at uh, versus what that one privacy has. But if you are very concerned about privacy and what your VPN can and can't do with your data, uh, definitely check out his link as well as that one privacy privacy to uh, find the VPN that is a good fit for you. And Cool Kid Brownies wrote in asking if companies ever get mad at me uh, when I didn't like their product. And yes, that does happen from time to time. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. About two or three years ago, I did a video about this actually. I didn't name the companies in question, but uh, two companies with, on the same day sent me these really nasty emails about how they didn't like the way I reviewed their product. But I had to remind them that I don't take editorial suggestions from brands when it comes to reviewing things on the channel here. It's just not how it works. And I look at their marketing and does the product meet the market? In other words, does the product work as advertised? And if it takes some time or some aggravation to get the product to work as advertised, then uh, that's going to get it a ding on a review because things should work as advertised without the customer getting frustrated in the process, especially because a bulk of my viewership are average consumers just looking for something very simple that uh, works the way the company says it does. I do hear from viewers a lot, though, people who are passionate about a product that feel like uh, I just didn't see it the way they see it, or perhaps they were a Kickstarter of that project. And 
and want it to succeed so their money isn't wasted. Those are things that happen from time to time. So I usually hear from someone who watched a video and was angry about my review more so than I hear from the companies about it. I do often, though, hear from companies who are angry that I didn't cover their product at all, and I just can't review everything. I don't have time to do everything that gets sent to me. I get hundreds of emails every week about all this stuff, and some things just aren't unique enough to uh, present to you as something that I find of interest. So I am very careful about what I pick and choose to review here on the channel. I've gotten pickier over time also, and that brings me to the next point. There are a bunch of products that I have in this room uh, that I have not reviewed because they're total garbage, or at least close to garbage, and just don't warrant me spending an hour or two hours or three hours making a review, uh, and it doesn't really make good use of your time to watch me just trash something over the course of 10 or 15 minutes. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, start an occasional series called Didn't Make the Cut, uh, where I look at some of these products that I didn't review and tell you why as a single video. So we won't spend 10 minutes on each product, maybe two minutes or so, uh, just describing what it is, why I think people shouldn't buy it, and why I didn't review it. I think that might be uh, helpful, just because I do want to let consumers know there are bad products out there, uh, and I really want to raise that uh, level of awareness for you. Let me know if that's something you would find interesting. It doesn't mean I'm not going to do bad reviews of bad products. I will, uh, and oftentimes a uh, less than favorable review will come when the product does meet its advertised specifications, but doesn't meet them well enough for me to recommend it. We're going to have one of those uh, coming up this week. So that's my approach to this. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down below in the comment stream. And about two weeks ago, I reviewed that Pro Controller from the Nintendo Switch, and I remarked that it was unfair to consumers for all these scalpers to come in and sell these things at a premium price, especially people that are going out and just hoarding them and then selling them for exorbitant prices. And Brian DeJesus wrote in and said, it is fair because it's basic supply and demand. And I will give him that, that yes, there is a limited supply and people are taking advantage of that uh, lower supply to try and uh, make some money in the process of doing so. And it's not good for consumers though, in my opinion, but consumers are buying these things at these prices, which encourages that, uh, that behavior to continue. However, there's some other stuff going on that I think is really unfair to consumers. And that is uh, big platforms like eBay uh, guaranteeing profits on particular products, kind of like the Nintendo Switch and other Nintendo products and many other things out there that might be in short supply. And uh, Polygon did a story a couple of months ago in regards to the NES Classic that I wanted to bring up here because eBay, in this example here, is guaranteeing a price of $193 in the case of this item they attempted to sell on the platform, which was an NES Classic right around the holiday season. So they are almost artificially uh, keeping the market high for this product by taking all the risk out for the seller. I think if you are going to scalp something and buy a bunch of them and spend a lot of money hoping to make a little bit of a profit, you got to have some risk here for this to be a true economic argument. And having these platforms subsidize these people is wrong. And uh, that is something that I definitely think we should all agree is unfair to consumers when eBay can come out and say, hey, you know that hot product you hoarded? Uh, we'll make sure you don't lose any money on it and still get top dollar for it because they both benefit and consumers lose. So best thing to do, though, is if you see one of these high-priced Nintendo Switch components is just wait for the uh, supply to come back in and pay the retail price versus paying these scalpers. And as long as people keep paying, this will, of course, continue. So the best way to stop it is to exercise your power as a consumer and just stop paying so much for things that if you just wait a few weeks for, you'll get at a much better price. And in my Q&A for you this week, I'd love to have a discussion about this topic down below in the comment thread. Uh, what do you think about scalping these high-ticket items, and is it right for eBay? Uh, to offer to take the risk out of it for those who are hoarding these things and selling them at high prices. Let me know what you think down below in the comment stream. I think we'll have some good discussion on that one. So this week, I hope to have a bunch of stuff ready to go. This is one I'm really intrigued about. Uh, this is called the All Controller, and you might have heard about this on the ReRes channel, which is a great YouTube channel run by Shane Lewis, a good uh, friend of mine here on the platform, and uh, he's working with uh, some folks on developing this controller that's going to work with everything, and it also has some really cool functionality built into the controller that allows you to adjust its sensitivity, do some macros, and everything else without having to have a driver to do it. It's all based on the controller CPU. So this is a, a prototype that I have. It's far from a completed product. So we'll be doing this as a first look and I'll show you some of its basic features. They've got a Kickstarter coming up soon. I got in the Lenovo Y520. This got done testing it over the weekend. So that will be up very soon. Uh, it's about an $850 starting point on this one. It's a gaming laptop with a 1050 Ti GPU. Uh, performs pretty nicely actually. So you'll be seeing uh, some, some stuff about that. And I got in the 
the Nighthawk S8000 gigabit switch. It's being geared to gamers and streamers. We'll see how that works and whether or not it's just a means of extracting more money from the gaming market. We also got to look at the Edifier speakers coming up. These are 99 bucks, but sound really good, I think, for the price. And you'll see more about those uh, in the next couple of days on the channel here as well. And speaking of channels, this week's channel of the week is My Life in Gaming. It's got about 55,000 subscribers. I'm surprised they don't have more. And uh, what's so funny about this channel is that uh, they go back and look at ways of getting your old classic game consoles hooked up to HD televisions. And back in the day when I was a kid, you bought the console, plugged it into the TV, and they all perform the same. Uh, nowadays, of course, it is very complicated to get all this stuff to work. So they spend a lot of time on uh, looking at ways to get your old consoles hooked up to uh, your modern equipment and a lot of other stuff too. If you are into the mechanics as to how all this stuff works, these guys are really doing a great job. Great production quality, well worth your time to check it out. So that is this week's channel of the week. Now, if you want to help my channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. We also have our tip jar set up at lon.tv slash tip jar for a one-time contribution. We also have the Plex thing going on still. So if you sign up for a free Plex account, uh, we get a small commission for that. And you can also gift a Plex pass to somebody if you already have one, and we get a share of that revenue also. And there are, of course, ways to engage with the channel. My extras channel at lon.tv slash extras is always uh, posting up some supplementary content. We have the email list that goes out just about every Tuesday at lon.tv slash email, my Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook, and the store, uh, which I will be spending some time on probably next weekend. I'm probably not going to post too much this week on the store, so if you're checking frequently, uh, there may not be something on there this week just because I've got a bunch of stuff to prepare for for my uh, trip to New York. I'm doing some stuff at the YouTube space, so uh, I probably won't get to getting rid of things this week, but uh, stay tuned for the weekend. I'm going to probably do my own version of a tag sale. I've got to clean out a room upstairs, and I've got a ton of stuff that uh, that may not uh, maybe actually may be of value to some of you. So I'll put it up there, and we'll see who wants it. So stay tuned for that. We do have live streams that I post at lon.tv slash live streams. I haven't done one in a while. Probably we'll do one maybe next week. So uh, stay tuned. If I can announce the time ahead of time, I will. But we've got uh, more live streams on the way. And that's going to do it for this week's weekly wrap-up. Thank you all once again for your continued support of the channel. We continue to grow. Subscribers keep coming on board. And we've got to weather now the uh, spring and the summer summer and get as much content up as possible for when those wallets come out for back to school season in the fall. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.